In this video, we wanted to talk about the amazing, René Descartes. On one hand, because math and philosophy are and can be extremely related, and on the other hand, because we are sure that these facts will help you better understand the person behind the legend. Let's begin. René Descartes was born into a well-educated, upper-class family on March 31, 1596 in the French village of La Haye en Touraine. The village is now called, Descartes, Indre et Loire, in his honor. His mother died soon after giving birth to him, his father remarried and he was raised by his maternal grandmother. From birth René, suffered poor health and had a permanent cough. Local doctors thought he would not survive infancy. His father employed a nurse who devoted herself to René's care. As an adult he believed his nurse saved his life and he paid her a permanent pension. At the age of about 10 or 11, René was finally considered healthy enough to begin school. He boarded at the Jesuit school at La Fleche in Anjou. In a concession to his delicate health, he was allowed to rise later in the morning than other students. René spent seven or eight years at La Fleche learning logic, theology, philosophy, Latin and Greek. In his final two years he also learned mathematics and physics. Nobody actually called him René. Descartes went by a nickname, and he introduced himself as Poitvin. His father wanted him to be a lawyer. He studied law at the University of Poitiers earning a law degree in 1616, though he never ended up practicing. Instead, at 22 years old, Descartes enlisted in the Dutch state's army, where he would study military engineering and later became fascinated with the study of math and physics. Descartes changed career paths based on a series of prophetic dreams. On the night of November 10, 1619, René Descartes was stationed in Germany. To keep warm, he shut himself in a room with a hot oven. It was then when he had three dreams, which according to him, allowed him to discover his life's purpose. It is said that he took from them the message that he should set out to reform all knowledge. In 1637, Descartes brought out his ideas in Discours de la méthode, discussion of the method. La géométrie, geometry, les météors, meteorology, and la dioptrique, optics. The first two contain his most significant contributions. In, la géométrie, Descartes first proposed that each point in two dimensions can be described by two numbers on a plane, one giving the point's horizontal location and the other giving the vertical location. He thus invented the Cartesian coordinate system, which forms the foundation of analytic geometry. The Cartesian coordinate system is named in his honor. Descartes' name in Latin is Cartesius. It also provides geometric interpretations for other branches of mathematics, such as linear algebra, complex analysis, differential geometry, multivariate calculus, group theory and more. Descartes never actually drew an X or Y axis in his work. These were assumed in his diagrams. The axes were formally introduced by the mathematician, Franz van Schuten, and other mathematicians in Leiden who translated la geometrie from French into Latin, while developing it further. Latin editions of la geometrie were released in 1649, 1659 and 1661. La géométrie, introduced what has become known as the standard algebraic notation, using lowercase, a, b, and c, for known quantities, and x, y, and, z, for unknown quantities. It was perhaps the first book to look like a modern mathematics textbook, full of a's and b's, x squares. Descartes also introduced the modern notation for exponents. For example, rather than writing 5 times 5 times 5, he would write 5 cube. He made the rule of signs, 
which is used to determine the number of negative or positive real roots of a polynomial. Calculus has been crucial to the progress of mathematics and the sciences. It was developed in the 1660s by Isaac Newton, and developed independently in the 1670s by Gottfried Leibniz. In La Geometry, Descartes showed how he could find tangents to curves. This process is a vital part of differential calculus. His mathematical competitor, Fermat, was also able to find tangents to curves, his methods were actually simpler than Descartes. Both, Descartes, and Fermat helped guide Newton, and Leibniz's development of calculus. He also had an influential role in the development of modern physics, a role which has been generally underappreciated and underinvestigated. He provided the first distinctly modern formulation of laws of nature, and a conservation principle of motion, made numerous advances in optics, and the study of the reflection, and refraction of light, and constructed what would become the most popular theory of planetary motion of the late 17th century. One of the most famous quotes in philosophical history came from the mind of René Descartes. I think, therefore I am. Descartes was reasoning that mankind truly does exist because we are capable of thinking. And a lot of thinking he did. Who says you have to wake up early to be successful? Descartes regularly slept until noon, and usually got 12 hours of sleep a night. He stated that sleep was nourishment for the brain, and often did work from his bed. Descartes was wealthy enough to pursue his own interests. His father gifted him a number of properties which Descartes, at the age of 24, sold. This raised enough money for him to live on comfortably for the rest of his life. In 1649, Descartes was invited to Stockholm by Queen Christina of Sweden. She wanted him to set up a new academy of science. He had a relationship with a servant in Amsterdam, Helena Jans van der Strom. They had a daughter named Francine, who was born in 1635. She died of scarlet fever at the age of five. Animal rights activists most likely don't love Descartes. He claimed that animals cannot reason and do not feel pain. Descartes stated that humans are conscious, have minds and souls, can learn and have language and therefore only humans are deserving of compassion. Descartes' skeleton has been moved several times. His head now rests in a collection at the Musée de l'Homme, in Paris. There is a theory that Descartes was actually assassinated. He died on February 11 in Stockholm at age 53 from pneumonia. However, German scholar Theodor Ebert believes that Descartes' death was not due to natural causes, but that he was poisoned by a Catholic priest due to his radical ideas. If you enjoyed the content of this video, click the subscribe button so you can receive more content like this every week. Thank you.